And Ian Williams is sitting across from me right now in our studio. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. It's a pretty accurate in- introduction though, right? Yeah. Very little sleep. <laughs> Very little yeah. sleep. Just how, oh, congratulations, by the thank way, you. before we get to anything, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Um, how little sleep? A couple hours, like two hours or so. It's odd, like as you were talking this morning, I was like, it's that weird sense of like, I'm waiting for you to say who you're talking about, right? Although <laughs> in theory, I know it. I'm like, yeah, sounds vaguely familiar, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who, whoever that guy is going to yeah. have a good day. <laughs> right, right. I want to play something. Can we take a listen to this? This is um, the moment your name was announced last night. And the winner of the 2019 Scotiabank Giller Prize is... Ian Williams for his novel, Reproduction. Reproduction. Ian, I couldn't help but notice you, you smiled all over again when you listened to that. No, every time I hear it, like, it, it hits me afresh, right? Like, maybe it'll, it'll get absorbed at some point, but still, like, every time I hear it, I was like, is that for real? I think just now, I was with uh, Scott, my publicist, in the, in the green room. I was like, I can't believe I won that, right? Oh, man. So, yeah, yeah, it takes a long time before that gets absorbed. What was, what was in your head the moment your name was announced and when you were walking up to the stage? Yeah, like, that brief detachment, I think, right, is what happens, and, yeah... Yeah, I, I just trying to process, right? Trying to match like the moment to what you think is happening. It's just, it didn't feel real. Yeah. I, I was very, like, you You looked very pleased that you had an acceptance speech with you. Like you had something to read from at least. You <laughs> right, know? right, right. Yeah, that almost didn't happen, right? You know, people advise you to sort of prepare something. And I wrote back to uh, my agent, this is like an exercise in cruelty. I, I, maybe I'll do that tomorrow, right? But yeah, it was actually a very wise thing to just be prepared, yeah. There's a line in your acceptance speech that's getting a lot of talk today. Uh, these are the yeah. very first words you said after the cheering died down. Like you have no idea. You have no idea like how, um, how special this is for me. So I've got like notes here of people that I need to thank, but maybe I'll just start like with my heart first. And I, Margaret Atwood over there, is the first book I bought with my own money at a bookstore in Brampton. You got to thank Margaret Atwood directly to her face for what she mm. meant to you as a reader as you win the Giller Prize. Why was that important mm. to you to do right off the bat? Yeah, it, it's maybe not an experience just unique to, to Atwood, but I think a lot of readers feel this towards writers that they spend a lot of time with, right? That, you know, you spend uh, your evenings and your summers and year after year and you track that author's career and progress. And you spend a lot more time with that author than that author ever spends with you. So there's this kind of intimacy that d- develops. And so... I feel like there's a kind of long-term, like, 25-year relationship between Atwood and me, although she doesn't. I mean, you know, she hasn't come over to my house or anything. Like, there's, there's none of that. But I feel so deep inside of her world and so deep inside of her years. And I read her when she was writing in her 20s and in her 30s and in her 40s. And the progress of that mind and that thinking, right, has been a great companion to me. What book was it, by the way, the first book you bought with your own money? The first book was a pink, uh, The Circle Game, right? A collection wow. of poetry from the late 60s. It won the GG, yeah. And I should say the reason I, I want to bring this up is is not just because she's a you know, great author and obviously meant the world to you, mm. but out in the audience watching you win this award is the very person you thank Margaret Atwood. I have to imagine you ran into each other <laughs> at the at the after party. Did you get to say hello? Well, we've met before at like the Griffin Awards and, and things like that. Um, but yeah, no, actually before like the event, the taping started during dinner, yeah, I squatted down and tried to get a selfie with her. And I did get a selfie with her, right? But it was like, and that alone, after that, like my whole sort of anxiety kind of settled down for a bit. And I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. She's yeah. a very peaceful, she can be a very peaceful presence. She's a calming presence. Yeah. She is. Um, <laughs> you share something else with her, too, by the way. You were both, write both poetry and fiction. You were shortlisted for the Griffin Poetry Prize for mm. your poetry collection, Personals. You compared being both a poet and a fiction writer to being bilingual. Mm. I was wondering if you could tell me more about that. Are those, those forms are different languages to you. They feel like, uh, by that I mean I feel comfortable in both of them, right? Like, um, you know, you can speak to mom in English and dad in French and, and, you know, you still love both parents equally and whatnot. So it's not like a preference for one or a privileging of one over the other. But sometimes the material comes to you. Sometimes you dream in a certain language and you speak in another language and the material comes in the form of poetry or is shaped into the form of poetry. And sometimes it's bigger and it needs, um, and messier and needs like, 
a fiction like space, right, for it. So that's what I mean by bilingual, right? The did, ability to switch tracks. Did and did what did one language help you uh, help another in the writing of this novel? Yeah, they're always related, right? You think about those kids who acquire languages early. Maybe we're pushing this metaphor a bit too far, but yeah, sometimes you sort of uh, use you know a Spanish word in this English context, and you move back and forth, and you assume that there's a kind of fluidity between those two, that movement, and so. Yeah, I, I don't want to sort of force the line too hard, but I, I do move back and forth, um, and sometimes I stay simultaneously in both. If you're just tuning in, my guest is Ian Williams, who won the Giller Award last night for the novel reproduction. I feel like I can't say it enough. <laughs> Seeing as how my re- your reaction to me saying oh, it was, who did? This giggling, yeah, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> no, at some point. No, at no point is there going to be a trap door. Is someone going to come in and say, no, 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 it was Mordecai Richler. Ian Williams won the Giller Prize, and you were up against a remarkable group of authors. Oh, yeah. I, I do want to acknowledge them all now. The other authors shortlisted for the Giller were David Bezmosgis, Megan Gail Coles, uh, Michael Crummy, Alex Olin, and Stephen Price. Um, you mm-hmm. toured the country together doing a series of events in recent mm-hmm. months. Is there a moment that stands out for your time together? Yeah, I, I mean, first of all, I don't think we were up against each other. I think we were That's with right each other for this whole time and I think we still are um, and so it's an unfortunate kind of consequence that this is how um, these situations need to end but there is the list is the winner in this case and I feel um, that way about like recent prize lists right the Griffin prize list recently and stuff nobody emerges as like a singular spectacular talent and all of that like this is a good list of people in Canada for the next 25 years. How, when do you think we'll die? 25 years? I think we got at 20? least 27. <laughs> okay. All right, That's your musician yeah. number yeah, there, yeah, I, right? got, I got a musician <laughs> optimism, two more than the poet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll take it. We'll take it. But we've got a good many years together, right? Uh, with us there. But no, it was like many different moments. They personalities emerged at the weirdest points. In New York, Megan was like, I've never been to New York. But I've watched a lot of SNL and 30 Rock, right? Like she's uh, delightful. Just going to the gym with uh, with David and Alex is always wonderful. Just yeah, different different moments, different parts. It's Stephen Price, you know, you could always just kind of, you know, touch his shoulder, and he's he's a good man, right? It and was Michael the f- Crummy. Ugh, yeah. Once you go down that track, right? It just it's floodgates. It was right? the first acceptance speech I've ever heard, where I think you said something like, "Anyway, we'll all see you at a barbecue really, really soon." <laughs> <laughs> well, Somebody's got to make that happen, right? I hope so. You know, CBC Books should make that happen. <laughs> Sheila Rogers should be out there grilling in the backyard and have you all over. Um, you didn't write this book because you were expecting to win the Giller, obviously. Oh. You, you wrote it because you had something you wanted to say. So can you take me back to the very beginning of this journey? Your poetry and short story collections very well received before this. Mm. Reproduction, uh, your Giller award-winning novel, is your first novel. Um, you said this book took six years to write. Um, how did this idea for this book start to take shape in your mind? Yeah, seven years. Um, yeah, it's hard to find the exact or- origin point, right, for this. I actually think it uh, sort, of, sort of followed some preoccupations in my 30s or so. Last book was about, like, relationships and finding love and dealing with sort of online and digital platforms, right? It, it, the kind of contemporary reality of how we meet people. And this book was sort of, like, beyond that. Um, how are, how do families sort of get together? How do they form? How are, are they destroyed? And how are they reformed? And what's uh, uh, like? What's the agent or the mechanism or the catalyst? Like, how is love able to both take us through the formation and destruction and reformation? And we keep doing this, right? And this, uh, you know, humans keep populating right this way. So it was kind of like a mid thirties crisis from. Um, a man, and I think we expect this kind of subject to be written about by women, but men, we feel this too, right? Like we don't speak about like abject loneliness and stuff, but Mm -hmm. the symptoms of like watching CFL on a Sunday evening alone, I mean, that's, there's a kind of profound loneliness behind that. Um, And so to acknowledge this as men, that we we do care about relationships and we do care about families and we're um, interested in all of that, like all of that was behind it. It, Part of my life, a point in my life, um, being honest with the men around me too, and the people around me, and just kind of writing through it. Yeah. Have you heard from from men who've read the book who've said they probably have never had this? I don't know if men would sort of <laughs> who said they have never had this experience. Oh no, sorry, who have never had this? Never have someone had right so? Uh, I mean, I think you're right about that. Mm. I think writing, watching sports on a Sunday can be such a profoundly lonely thing to do. Mm-hmm. That you know, th- th- have you heard from men who have said, you know, you're right, I've never really talked about that before. No, and I don't. I don't suspect I will very much, right? Unless it's the right context and whatnot. Um, but for someone to admit that uh, they feel something doesn't 
sort of make it more true or less true, mm. right? Like we know it to be true, um, and we don't need confirmation of it. It exists there, and people don't have to sort of come back and and admit that. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't mean to be Gaussian. Yeah. Hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to ask. You know, what are you going to do with it? You know, right. but, but uh, I, I am curious. Are you going to get a little treat for yourself? Is there something you're going to get from this brief time that you've known me here? What do you suspect I'm going to do with this? Like Dairy Queen Blizzard or something like that? I don't know. <laughs> That's the first thing that popped into my head this morning. It was like maybe you just get a. I'm just thinking like I just, I'm thinking about a treat, like maybe a uh, a new chair or a, a, a pen. <laughs> A pen, a pen, or a pen, a, a pen. pen. Yeah. Um, no, there'd probably be some really mundane kind of pleasures. I think that Dairy Queen Blizzard is not a bad idea. Actually, I do have a thing for milkshakes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, you know, I think people want you to say like you're gonna do something profound with it, and you're gonna like I don't know, I don't know, solve the water crisis in California or whatever. But um, let, I think that's just gonna sit in an investment for a little bit, really dully, until I figure out what's the best use for that money. You know what? Yeah. A, sc- a score blizzard on me. <laughs> All right. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> All right. How about, but how about okay. next? I mean, does winning the Giller Prize impact? I'm, I'm sure you're working on another work already, but yeah. um, does, does winning the Giller Prize impact that process? Like, are you working on more fiction now because mm. of this? Or mm, No, no, no. Yeah, a poetry collection is going to come out next year, and then after that I'm working on a, a novel, right? So, yeah, uh, deep in, like, two projects, different genres. And beyond that, I can't see that far, right? That'll take me to... 43 or so, 44. Yeah. I'll close off like this. Somewhere out there listening is someone struggling to become a writer, someone struggling to do creative work, someone trying to write their first novel, maybe. As someone who just won Canada's biggest literary prize for his first novel, what do you wish you'd known back then when you were starting out? Mm-hmm. Hmm. In this sort of struggle, struggle period? Just someone who's listening to this right now where you were maybe 15, 20 yeah. years ago. It's interesting that you frame it as struggle though, right? But um, also to think about like what you're doing now is probably um, among your top two or three greatest pleasures as well. So, I mean, the story is, yeah, seven years of a very hard process and all of that. But I also spent seven years in private with some really wonderful characters that now like the they have access to the world, but for a while they were just mine, right? Like in a way that your family's just yours or your dog is just yours. Um, and I mean, that kind of pleasure is just, yeah, that that is worth it, right? Giller or no giller, like that's, that's real pleasure. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Oh.